Hello and welcome to episode 3 of our JRPG series. In the last episode we got our characters and our enemies spawned into the world ready to do battle. In this episode we're going to now add the UI to the screen so we can see each character's health, mana and action time bar ready for take their turn. So let's get started and building our widgets. So first thing I'm going to do is go into my UI folder and we're going to create a new folder in here for widgets. And in the widgets here, we're going to create a user interface widget blueprint. And this will be the main battle HUD. So we're going to battle heads up display. And that's where everything's going to go eventually. Uh, alongside that, we also want to make the party interface. So we're going to do party uh, widget. And as part of that, we also want the individual party units. So we've got their name and details from there. So we're going to right click user interface widget blueprint. And this will be party um, widget slot underscore um, slot. Okay. So that'd be individual ones that are part of that. So let's design the individuals. So I'm going to get rid of the canvas panel. And in its place, I want to put in a, a vertical box, first of all. And in that vertical box, I'm going to put in a horizontal box. And we're going to focus on the horizontal box first of all. So the horizontal box is going to store the name, the HP, and MP. So let's put in various texts in here. So we need text in there. That'd be the name, be the HP, the actual number, and the max, MP, MP tech number, and MP max. So in total, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven text blocks. Okay, so let's change some of these about. So the second one is going to be the HP. So I'm just going to the label for HP. So I'm going to do HP. And I'm going to use my font that I brought in, as I mentioned in episode one. Change that to my quicksand font. And we're going to change the size of that to uh, 12. The next one along is going to be the number. So I'm going to put in the default number here. We're going to put uh, 99. Uh, 999 and change the font of that to the quick sound font again. I'm gonna leave that one as 24 though. Uh, the one after that is gonna be the maximum number of health they have, so we're gonna put in 99, 999, change the font, and I'm gonna change the size here to 12. And I'm gonna make this text um, at the bottom of it, so I'll click at the bottom alignment, it goes there. The HP alignment, I'll put the top, so it goes HP number 999. Okay, we do the same for MP here. So this can be MP and change that to quicksand, change that to 12. This one is going to be quicksand 24, it's going to say 999. And this one here is going to be 999. Quicksand this time 12. I'm going to align that one to the bottom and align the MP here to the top. Okay, so it looks kind of like this. The name of the character is going to go here. Uh, so we're going to change the font here to Quicksand font. And I'm going to leave it at 24. But I want this to fill the available space. So it pushes all of it along. So if I hit on the fill button, you can see how it pushes it along like so. Okay. Um, obviously it won't be this long in the actual game because it's just filled up the available space. Uh, so once we put it into the actual widget, it will look quite nice. So that'll be that. Um, I'm going to actually embolden and change the color of a few of these things. So I'm going to click on the text block name here. And we're going to change this to be, uh, rather than default, I'm going to change it to maybe bold. Like that. And... And change the colorings of my HP and MP here. I'm going to change it to this sort of yellow color, which I've already found. Is that? And I'm going to keep this one here. If you want to know how to use the, the color picker up here, once you've found a color, just drag it from here to the top and it saves it for later use. Okay, and go there. Okay, so there's our character display. Now I'm also going to want to put a bit of padding around this. So I'm going to click on the horizontal box and on padding here, 
we're going to put in a padding of 10. And on the left, in particular, I'm going to put in a padding of 20. And on the right, I'm going to put in 20. So it pads in the left and right a little bit more than top and bottom. And then part of the vertical box then is going to be the progress bar. And the progress bars can be used for their uh, action timer. So drag that in and it'll go there. Now it will stretch across the whole entire thing, first of all, uh, which is fine. That, that's okay. What we want to do then is we want to change the size of that one so it's limited in size uh, to the widget here. We don't want it to go the whole, whole width. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write a uh, drag in a spacer. Uh, not spacer, sorry. Um, right click on the progress bar and do a size box. And on the size box here, we're going to do a width override and we're going to change the size here to, um, let's say, 250. Okay. Now, if I change that from field screen to desired on screen, it'll look like this. Um, if I change it to custom on screen, I can customize the size of the widget using these bars here so I can see how it's going to look. And then with the size box, you're going to click and change its horizontal alignment here, not to a stretch fill, but to align to the left. Now keep us to that size there. So uh, 250 is a bit too small. Let's change that to 300. Uh, and just tweak it to get really what you want, really. I'm going to add some padding to this. So the size box will have padding on the left to keep it in line with the name here. And line it by 20. And there you go. Cool. Compile and save that. Overall, I want this to have a little bit of padding above and below it, in particularly below it. So, on the padding for the root of that hierarchy, I'm going to change the bottom padding here to be uh, let's do 10. Then hit compile and save. Okay, that would do for now. What we're going to do is we can close that and we're going to open up our party uh, widget. And in here, we want to design the whole widget itself. So I'm going to get rid of the canvas panel. And in its place, I'm going to put in a border. And inside that border, I'm going to put in a vertical box. And this border, I'm going to change the color of. So I'm going to go to brush color. And I'm going to change the uh, alpha of this down to like 0.0. .0 one and change it to black there's a slightly darker background to it and i'm also going to add a background blur to this as well so i'm going to right click on vertical box wrap this with a background blur and i'm putting a blur strength of like five quite a nice little style to that okay so now we've got the vertical box in there we can now add our units so for now we're just going to add it into it um manually but we will be making it dynamic when we actually put it into the game. We just want to see how it looks in its appearance. So here we're going to just drag in our party widget slot. And there's our first character. And I'll duplicate that two more times. So we've got the three characters all there. Now remember this is still full screen. It's not going to actually look like this in this size. Uh, we're going to hit save on that. I'm going to put it into my battle heads up display. I'm going to search for party widget and drag that in. Okay, so now we can set the size here. You can see how the scaling of it works now. So if I set this like so, and I want to change this anchor here to the bottom right. So change anchor to bottom right. And the alignment I want in the X to be one. So it lines it to the far right side of the widget. And then Y, I want it to be one as well. So it lines to the bottom of the widget. So if I change the position now to zero, 0, it lines it flush with the edge. Now you don't typically want it flush with the edge, you do want to give it a little bit of offset. So in the Y here, we're going to do minus 100. And in the X here, we'll do minus 100 as well. So it just pushes it in like so. Um, and that'll do us just fine, I think, there. I think I'm quite happy with that position there. Maybe change the width of it a little bit. So I'm going to bring that down somewhat like so. Not too bad let's i'm going to change actually the position here to be minus 50 and minus 50. that's a bit better brilliant okay so we've got now our characters all 
going to be appearing like so. Now to get them to dynamically add themselves to the game, we're going to hit compile and save this. And on the party widget, this is a variable. So we need to set up the ability to add slots to this party widget. So I'm going to go into the graph of my battle heads up display. And we're going to create a function to add a party unit to HUD. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to drag out here and do create widget. And we want to choose the party widget slot. Now for this to show the character correctly, we need to have character information available to us from the unit base. And we need to send that unit base from the add party unit to HUD. So on add party unit to HUD, we're going to go to inputs and we're going to add the unit class. Uh, sorry, we do it, yeah, unit. Just call it unit, and this would be uh, a unit base reference, in particular party unit base. But it doesn't really matter. We'll just do unit base, and we need to go to unit base now to add that basic information. Go to unit base, and we go to variables, and we're going to do um, name, and that'd be their text number, their uh, text value. Uh, then we've got their current HP, right, I'll just call it HP underscore current, and that'll be a float, HP underscore max, again a float, MP underscore current, float, and MP underscore max float. And we'll set default values for all these as well. So name, we're going to set here as uh, default. HP current will set to uh, will set to one thousand. HP max will set to one thousand. MP current will do one hundred, and MP max will do one hundred. Now, because they're variables on the unit base, it means I can now go into my characters and set up their names. So I go to Greystone and set up his uh, specific information. I've opened the full blueprint editor settings. I go to class defaults, and on the right hand side, I can change his name here. So this would be Greystone. Save and compile on that one. Gideon's. Gideon. And finally, Faye. And hit compile and save there. So there's our three units set up. Uh, we now need to be able to send that over to our slot. So let's go to our UI folder. Go to our party widget slot. And on here, we need to make these things variable. So on the things that are going to be changing, you need to make sure the variable is ticked up top here. So this one is our name. That'll be changing. So we need a tick variable. And we'll call this one unit name text. The numbers here will also be variable. So it's to be HP current text, HP max text, MP current text, and MP max text. And we'll make the variable is ticked for each one of those that we've just named. Okay, brilliant. Uh, the progress bar here, we we'll might as well name as well whilst we're here. We'll change this one to character action bar. And hit compile and save. We're going to go to the graph now. So on the graph here, we need to know what unit that this one belongs to. So I'm going to go to variables and we'll tap in unit. And the unit is going to be a type of unit base. And on the pre-construct, we're going to drag that unit out. And from there, I'm going to get their name. And I'm going to set that name to their name text value here. So get unit name text, set text, and plug that into the pre construct. So now that will update the name to match the unit. Uh, next, we want to do the MP and HP current text. So we do HP current, HP max, 
And I'm just going to copy these multiple times. I need a few of them. Yeah. MP and MP max. Okay, and then from the unit here, I'm going to drag out the various values. So HP, current, HP, max, MP, current, and MP, max. HP current, we're going to put into in text there, and that'll format the text for us. HP max, go into there, and that'll format the text for us again, and so on and so forth. Like that. Hit compile and save that. Okay, we're good here. We can close this now. That's the slot setup. The next thing we want to do is we can go back to our battle heads up display and go to that function we made in that graph, add part to unit. And we want to make it so we can see those values appear here and set the unit on here. So we need to go to the party widget slot, go to the unit variable, and we'll make that editable and exposed on spawn. Now, when the exposed on spawn is ticked, it allows you to see it on here. If I just refresh this, you can see it here. I'm going to add party unit to HUD. Oh, save. Okay, so there's our function that'll do that. We now need to add it to the widget itself. So it's creating the widget, but it needs to actually add it to this widget. So I'm going to go to the party widget and drag that out. And then from there, I need to get the vertical box I need to put this in. So let's go into the party widget and click on the vertical box. And I'm going to tick is variable and we'll call this one party unit. And I'm going to delete the current contents of that because we don't want that in there. All that, go back to our head up display. And on party widget, we're going to get the party uh, unit list. And we're going to do add child to vertical box and plug that in there. Hit compile and save. So that's all we need to do here. So what we now need to do is be able to call this function in the right place. For that, we're going to go over to our game mode. So we're going to close this and go to our game mode. And on here, we need to get access to the HUD itself and change that and call that function. So to get access to the HUD, we need to actually spawn the HUD. Now, the, you've got a few places you can put it. I tend to prefer to put the HUD on the player controller, but it's totally up to you. You can put it here if you want, or the controller. So I'm going to put mine on the controller. And on the begin player, the controller, we're going to create widget. And we're going to choose the battle heads up display. I'm going to promote that to a variable. And we'll put battle HUD. And I'm going to add that to viewport. Simple as that, really. And then on the game mode, I want to on begin play here. I'm going to do it right at the start. I'm going to get the player controller. And I'm going to cast that to our battle player controller. And I'm going to get the battle. And for this, I'm going to promote that to a variable in here as well. It's always handy to have that reference once you've got it. Okay, so that's going through now and getting all the various functions stuff here. I then want to drag out my battle HUD at the very end of my begin play. And then from there, I want to call the function add uh, party unit to HUD. Now for this, I've got to add individual party units to this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag out my party units array, do a for each loop, and plug that in. And for each one, we're going to add party unit to HUD, and then drag the array element into unit there. Compile and save. 
Okay, and I think that's it. So let's go and test this out. Hit play. So there's our HUD appearing here. It hasn't added the functions to the, uh, the the information to the HUD. So let's check out why that might be the case. So we've got access to none, trying to read property battle HUD. So this is probably because the game mode is happening too quick for the player controller. The player controller is doing this bit after the, the game mode has already tried calling for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this then to the other side of the begin play. So after the for each loop here, sorry, before the for each loop here, we'll put this in. There. And then it's away, add that in there. Okay, and then from there we can go add party unit to HUD. And plug that in. Let's see if that does anything. If it still does the issue, what we can use is use a delay to slow it down so it gives a chance to the player controller to do its thing. So we've still got the issue here. So going to access none. Probably the case. So in here, we want to slow that down. Let's go to the uh, game mode. And once it's done this bit, we're going to put a delay in before it does the cast to buy a controller. So do delay. And 0.2 seconds will be just fine. And that's going through there. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Hit play on this. So now you can see you've got our characters widgets appearing down here on the screen. Just fine. Brilliant. So there we go. Um, as you can see, the brightness is a bit of an issue. Uh, we'll probably darken the widget here, but let's quickly do that. Um, go to party widget. Go to the background on the border. Change the brush color here. I'm gonna change the alpha here to 0 0.4. A lot darker. And let's see how that looks. That's a lot better. We can actually see the various things quite nicely here now. Okay. Um, brilliant. So we can see the background a lot better now. Things are popping off a little bit more. I might make the text actually more bold rather than this sort of lighter color here because it makes it still a bit too tricky to see because it's quite thin. So I'm going to go into my uh, slot here. I'm going to change the font to match what I've done with the name here. So let's change. Uh, all these, uh, select it from typeface default to bold. Okay, and let's see how that looks now in comparison. That's a bit better. We can actually see the numbers now a lot clearer. But there we go. And there we go. We've now got a UI on our screen ready to show information to the player. In the next episode, we're going to now add the starting the turns of each character. And when they start their turn, to show their initial menu, so they can choose to attack, do magic, or use techniques or items. So join us on the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, or by becoming a YouTube member. Massive thank you to all my supporters on YouTube memberships and on Patreon. If you want to become a Patreon member, head over to the website and you can subscribe for just $1 a month and get access to all my videos before anyone else. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.